Chapter 1. Law of Attraction Understanding the Law of Attraction is the key to creating the life of your dreams. The Law of Attraction is the most powerful law in the universe. Just like gravity, it's always in effect, always in motion, and it's working in your life at this very moment. Simply put the Law of Attraction that says that you will attract into your life whatever you focus on. Whatever you give your life and energy and attention will come back to you. So if you stay focused on the good and the positive things in your life, you will automatically attract more good and positive things into your life. If you're focused upon lack and negativity, then that is what you will be attracting into your life. You are what you think about all day long, Dr. Robert Schuller. You are always in a state of creation. You always have been. You are creating your reality in every moment and every day. You are creating your future with every single thought, either consciously or subconsciously. You can't take a break from it or decide not to create, because creation never stops. The law of attraction never stops working. So, understand just how this is law and how the law operates in a fundamental key to your success. If you want to change your life, you have to empower yourself to create an amazing future. Then you need to understand your role in the law of attraction. To let life happen to you is irresponsible. To create your day is your divine right. Ramtha. Here's how it works. Like attracts like. If you're feeling excited, enthusiastic, passionate, happy, joyful, appreciative, abundant, then you are sending out positive energy. On the other hand, if you're feeling bored, anxious, stressed out, angry, resentful, or sad, then you're sending out negative energy. The universe, through the law of attraction, will respond enthusiastically to both of these vibrations. It doesn't decide whether it's better or which one is better for you. It just responds to whatever energy that you are creating, and it gives you more of the same. You get back exactly what you put out there. Whatever you are thinking and feeling at any given moment is basically your request to the universe for more of the same. Because your energy has vibrations, it will attract energy back to you at the same frequencies. You need to make sure that you are continually sending out energy and thoughts and feelings that resonate with what you want to be, do, and experience. Your energy frequencies need to be in the same tune with whatever you want to attract in your life. If love and joy are what you want to attract, then the vibrational frequencies of love and joy are what you want to create. Think of it this way. It's a lot like transmitting and receiving radio waves. Your frequency is to match a frequency that you want to receive. You can't tune your radio to 98.7 on your FM dial and expect to get a station broadcasting on 103.3. It just won't happen. The energy has to be synchronizing with or match or the energy frequency of the sender. So, you have to keep the vibration tuned into a positive frequency in order to attract positive energy back to you. Another good example is that a tuning fork. When you strike a tuning fork, you activate it and send out a particular sound of frequency. Now, in a room filled with tuning forks, only those that are tuned to an exact same frequency will begin to vibrate the response. They will automatically connect to a respond in a frequency that matches their own. So the idea here is to tune yourself to resonate at a frequency that is in harmony with what you want to attract. In order to create a positive future, you need to keep your energy, thoughts, and feelings in a positive range. You can learn to manage your thoughts and emotions and maintain a vibrational match for what you want to attract by learning to respond instead of just reacting to situations in your life. Learn to respond. Most of us go through our life and reacting automatically or unconsciously to the things or the events that take place around us. Perhaps you're having a rough day, you've gotten a flat tire, maybe someone's treated you unfairly. Say that you react in a negative way to these situations. With your thoughts and your emotions, you become angry, frustrated, and upset. In this case, you are unconsciously reacting to a situation instead of consciously responding to it. You want to consciously respond to everything versus unconsciously reacting. And your negativity charges thoughts and emotions it's automatically placing in an order with the universe for more of the same negative experiences. In order to create a more positive outcome, you must learn to consciously respond in a different, more positive way. If you want to do what you've always done, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. Anthony Robbins The good news is that... Once you understand the law of attraction and how it works, you can begin consciously and intentionally creating a better life that you choose to respond differently in situations. Whenever things arise during a day, you could choose to think differently. Differently, You could choose to focus and think about the things that you want more of in your life. You could choose to experience more of the things that make you feel good. You could choose to deliberately participate in a creation of your own future by managing your thoughts and feelings. Your future is created by what you do today. Not tomorrow. Your future determines on what you do today, right here and right now. Not tomorrow. Expect miracles. Your future is created by what you do today, not tomorrow. Robert Kiyosaki. The law of attraction allows your infinite possibilities, infinite abundance, infinite joy. 
It knows no order of difficulty, and it can change your life in every way. In order to really understand how the law of attraction works in your life, we need to look at a few things. Well, let's start at the beginning. The universe is change. Our life is what our thoughts make it. Marcus Aurelius Antoninus. Chapter 2. What you are. You are energy, pure and simple. You're made of the same stuff as the sun, the moon, and the stars. You are a walking, talking bundle of intelligent energy in the form of a human body. You're made up of cells, which are made up of atoms, which are made up of subatomic particles. What are subatomic particles? Energy. Everything is energy. All matter is energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It is the cause and effect of itself. It is evenly present. It's evenly present in all places, at all times. Energy is a constant motion and never rests. It is forever moving from one form to another. Energy follows thoughts. There's no extra peace in the universe. Everyone is here because he or she has place a place to fill. And every piece must be fit in itself into a big jigsaw puzzle. Deepak Chopra. You are connected. You are connected to everything and everyone. You are completely a unique piece of a much greater whole, the integral part of the cosmos. You are a ball of energy in a much larger energy field, and you are part as much of a greater power. You are part of God. The wisdom of an entire universe is yours for the asking. Think of the internet. You can't see it or touch it, but you know that it's there. It is real. It is an invisible energy connecting that links us all together to each other. You are connected to everyone and everything in the much in the same way. Have you ever found that people who you are close to, you could sometimes finish a sentence for them, or the both of you say the same thing at the exact same time? This is not a coincidence. It's a connection. This is a perfect example of how connected we really are for those around us. Again, things like that isn't a coincidence. It's a connection. We've all had the same experiences of starting to think about someone, perhaps something or someone whom we haven't seen or spoken in years. And then several minutes later, the phone rings, and it's them on the other end of the line. I was just thinking about you. We exclaim in wonder. We were actually picking up on the intention to call, but before they had that time of acting upon it, our thoughts travel through time and space and at an amazing speed. Through your connection, we are able to pick up an energy of our thoughts and intentions before we even dialed the number. Or perhaps it was your thinking about them that stimulated them to call you. Because of the law of attraction, each of you is like a powerful magnet attracting more of the way that you feel at any point in time. Esther and Jerry Hicks. You are a magnet. You are a living magnet. You literally attract the things, people's ideas, circumstances to you that vibrate and resonate the same energy frequencies as yours. Your energy comes and changes constantly based on your thoughts and feelings. And then the universe acts like a mirror, sending back the reflection of the energy that you project. The stronger and more intense your thoughts, the emotions are, the greater the magnetic pull becomes. Now that this is a process greater than requires it doesn't now that this is not a process that requires any real effort, a magnet doesn't try to attract anything, it just simply does, and so do you. You are always in the process of attracting something into your life. Do you realize that your life at this very moment is the result of everything that you have ever thought of, done, believed, and felt up to now? That your life is exactly this very moment the result of everything that you've ever thought, done, believed, and felt up till now? You can start right now to consciously and deliberately attract whatever you desire into your lifetime. Through the law of attraction, you can attract people, resources, money, ideas, strategies, circumstances, literally everything you need to create the future of your dreams. And all that we are is the result of what we have thought. Buddha. You are far more powerful than you realize. You are creating everything in your life. Once you fully acknowledge this, take responsibility for it and you can do anything that you set your mind to. You are the author of your own life. You can choose to take it in any direction that you wish. You have the ability to change your life. You have the ability to create your own desired future. You have unlimited potential. And once you make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. Ralph Waldo Emerson Chapter 3. Who You Are Thoughts are things. Your thoughts are not just wispy little clouds drifting through your head. Your thoughts are things. They're actually measurable units of energy. Thoughts are biochemical electrical impulses. They are waves of energy that, as far as we can tell, penetrate all time and space. Thought is action in rehearsal. Sigmund Freud. Your thoughts are powerful. They are real. They are measurable. They are energy. Every single thought that you have is in the statement of your desires to the universe. Every single thought that you ever generate psychological changes in your body. You, can, you are a product of all your thoughts that you have thought, feelings that you felt, 
actions that you've taken up till now and the thoughts that you think of today, feeling your feel today, the actions you take today will determine your experiences tomorrow. So it is imperative that you learn to think and behave in a positive way from which is in alignment with all that you ultimately want to be, do, and experience in your life. The game of life is the game of boomerangs. Our thoughts, deeds, and words return to us sooner or later with astounding accuracy. Florence Shin Game of life is like boomerangs. Thoughts affect your body. Thoughts affect your body. We know from a polygraph, a lie detector test, that your body reacts to thoughts, changes in temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, breathing rate, muscle tension, how your hands may sweat. Let's just say you're hooked up to a lie detector test and you ask a question like, did you take the money? And you did take the money and you lie about it. Your hands may sweat, get colder, your heart may beat faster, your blood pressure goes up, your breathing will be faster, your muscles will tighten. These kinds of psychological reactions occur not only when you are lying, but in reaction to every thought that we have. Every single cell in your body is affected by every single thought you have. I admit thoughts influence the body. Albert Einstein. I admit thoughts influence the body. So you can see the importance of learning to think of positive, positively as possible. Negative thoughts are toxic and they make the effects of your body in a negative way. They weaken you, make you perspire, create muscular tension, even create a more acidic environment within your body. They increase the likelihood of cancer. Cancer cells thrive on acidic environments and the other diseases. They also send out a negative energy vibration that attracts more experiences of the same vibration. Positive thoughts, on the other hand, will affect your body in a positive way. They'll make you feel more relaxed, more centered and alert. They stimulate the release of endorphins in your brain, reducing pain and increasing pleasure. In addition to this, your positive thoughts send out a positive energy vibration that will attract more positive experiences back into your life. It has been proven now, scientifically, that an affirmation thought is hundred times more powerful than a negative thought. Michael Bernard Beckwith Your Conscious and Subconscious Mind most of us are fairly aware of our conscious thoughts, but it's important to become more aware of our subconscious thoughts as well. Our subconscious mind is pretty much the running, it's the running of the show. Our subconscious mind is pretty much running the show, and since most of us have a constant negative tape playing in our heads, we're continually sending out a negative message. You must learn to reprogram your subconscious mind to transform your negative internal thoughts into a healthy positive one. By looking closely at your beliefs and self-image, you can work on eliminating any limiting and negative ideas. This negative self-talk is like a type of static or interference on a phone call. It will interfere with, distort, and even block the frequencies of your positive intentions. If not removed, it will reduce your ability to create and manifest the future you desire. Sometimes you've got to let everything go. Purge yourself. If you're unhappy with anything, whatever it's bringing you down, get rid of it. Because you'll find out that when you're free, you'll full and truly create your true creativity, your true self comes out. Tina Turner Unfortunately, many of us have a fairly stubborn tendency to hold on to old negative thoughts and self-images. In our comfort zone, we become more accustomed to our familiar concepts of reality. And we tend to get stuck in our subconscious beliefs of inadequacy, fear of doubt, fear and doubt. Most of these limiting thoughts and feelings stem from past incidents, beliefs, experiences that we've internalized over the years and turned into a personal truth. These negative concepts can sabotage us and keep us from realizing our fullest growth and potential unless we make a conscious decision to address them, release them, and let them go. Think about trying to drive a car with a parking brake on. No matter how much you try to accelerate, the parking brake will always keep slowing you down. As soon as you release it, you will automatically and effortlessly go faster. Your limiting thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are like this type of psychological parking brake. It will drag you down and slow you down unless you make a commit and committed effort to let them go and let it be replaced with some more positive thoughts and beliefs. You must be willing to release your negative mental programming and step out of the comfort zone in order to make room for a positive, healthy self-image and belief system. This will shift your energy vibrations and allow you to be more easily, effectively attracting of positive energy and experience experiences from which you desire in your life. Beliefs are just habitual thoughts, and they can be changing through affirmations, positive self-talk, behavioral changes, and visualization techniques. These are all extremely effective tools in releasing these old negative thoughts, patterns, and we will address each of these powerful techniques in chapters to come. If you find your negative programming is so deeply rooted in your experiencing of great difficulties of letting go, you may want to try another approach. You've discovered three very powerful releasing techniques. They are called extreme effectiveness and releasings of negative thought patterns, beliefs, and emotions. They are the Sedona Method by Hale Drowski. www.sedonamethod.com The Work of Byron Katie. www.thework.com 
the Emotional Freedom Technique, www.emofree.com. Each of these websites contain information on books, audios, and courses, seminars that will help you learn quickly and powerfully to release your negative mental programming. What the mind of a man can conceive and believe, the mind of a man can achieve. Napoleon Hill. Your conscious mind. Your conscious mind is part of that from which thinks and reasons and the part of your mind to use to make everyday decisions. You're free. Your free will lies here. And with your conscious mind, you can decide from what you want to create in your life. And with this part of your mind, you can accept to reject any idea. No person or circumstance can force you to think consciously about thoughts or ideas that you do not choose to think about. The thoughts you choose, of a course, will eventually deter determine the course of your life. This practice and will be a bit of disciplined effort, but you can learn to direct your thoughts onto only those things that will support the manifestations of your chosen dreams and goals. Your conscious mind is powerful, but it is the more limited part of your mind. The, sub the conscious mind has. The conscious mind has limited processing capacity. Short-term memory about 20 seconds. The ability to manage one to three events at a time. Impulses that travel 120 to 140 miles an hour. The ability to process an average of 2,000 bits of information per second. Your subconscious mind is actually much more spectacular. It is frequency referred to as a spiritual and universal mind. It knows no limits except for which you consciously choose. Your self-image of your habits to live in a subconscious mind. It functions in every single cell of your body. This is the part of the mind that's connected to your higher self, much greater the level of your conscious mind. But it's connected. It is your connection to God, your connection to the source of the universe of infinite intelligence, your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is the habitual and timeless of the works of the present tense only. It stores your past learning experiences and memories and the monitors all your bodily operations, motor functions, heart rate, digestions, etc. Your subconscious mind t thinks literally. If you accept every thought of your subconscious mind chooses to think, then you have no ability to reject concepts or ideas. Now, what that means is, is that you can choose to use your conscious mind deliberately and reprogram our subconscious beliefs. And the subconscious mind has to accept the new ideas and beliefs. It can't reject them. We can actually make a conscious decision, a conscious decision to change the content of our subconscious mind. See, the subconscious mind has expanded processing capacity, long-term memory, past experiences, attitude, values, beliefs, the ability to man manage thousands of events at a time, impulses that travel at over 100,000 miles per hour, the ability to process an average of 4 billion bits of information per second, your subconscious mind. And as you can see, the subconscious mind is far more powerful than the conscious mind. Think of the mind as an iceberg, and the part of the iceberg you see is the part above water, is your conscious mind. It represents only one-sixth of your actual mental capacity. The part below water, the other five-sixths, is your subconscious mind. When you operate primarily on the conscious mind, as we typically do, we are using only a fraction of our true potential. The conscious mind is much more slower, much more cumbersome vehicle than the subconscious mind. So... The goal here is to learn to tap into the vast power of our subconscious mind in order to use it in our advantage. We must create a room in each of which we check in with our subconscious spiritual mind. Daily time spent quietly without any external distractions will strengthen our connection to who we really are. We can connect with our subconscious mind through the use of several techniques. They include affirmations, visualization, prayer, contemplation, meditation, gratitude, appreciation, and the use of positive focus techniques. Our subconscious mind can take us to where we want to go and help us reach the goals in our life much faster and more easily than our conscious mind ever could. So by connecting with our and utilizing our amazing speed, power, and agility of our subconscious mind, we can begin to use the law of attraction in a deliberate way to more effectively attract and create the results we desire. Within your right now, within you right now is the power to do things you never dream possible. Within you right now, this power becomes available to you just as soon as you can change your beliefs. Dr. Maxwell Maltz Chapter 4 Emotions Your emotions are the key. Your emotions are a critical component in the application of the law of attraction. Learn to listen to them. They are your important internal feedback systems that tell you that you are in a body's visceral response to the vibrational state that you are creating. You are creating this vibrational frequency with whatever you are giving your attention to. These thoughts of your thinking, 
the beliefs that you are contemplating, the television shows that you are watching, the music you're listening to, the book you are reading, with whatever activity you are engaged in. Your feelings are part of an internal guidance system for which you are feeling a joy or a sense of expansion. It simply means that you are on course with the things that you're focusing on, the thoughts that you're thinking on or creating, the ideas you are entertaining, the activities you are engaging in are actively moving you in a direction of your purpose, dreams, and desires. When you are feeling anger, sadness, depression, hopelessness, any feelings that you give in a sense of physical contraction, then you are thinking of thoughts and attending to things that you are not taking you towards your purpose, dreams and desires. This is feedback that you're saying, that you are off course. You're an emotion. Your emotions are telling you that it's time to switch gears. They are telling you that it's time to think more uplifting thoughts. Change your focus. Change your channel. Change the topic of discussion. And go to something different that will shift your energy and bring you feelings of joy and expansion. Love is life. And if you miss love, you miss life. Leo Buscaglia. Since your vibrational state is what attracts your objects of your desire. It is imperative to keep your emotions as positive as possible. Strive to keep your emotions as positive ranges, feeling like joy, love, happiness, exhilaration, satisfaction, relief, pride, appreciation, relaxation, serenity. These feelings will raise your vibrational level and create a vibrational match for the experiences that you expect to have in your dreams to come to fruition. Remember like attracts like. Like always attracts like. This is what you like unto itself is to draw. So, by deliberately creating, deliberately creating the positive emotional states that match the feelings that we have on our completion and fulfillment of our goals and desires, we are creating an energy field that will attract what we want. This is only why learning to respond to circumstances instead of just reacting to them and thereby manage your emotional moods is so important. So, do the things that make you feel good. Be passionate and enthusiastic about your life. When you feel emotionally fully and deeply, you radiate more intense frequencies into the universe. The stronger you more intense your feelings are, the more accelerated the process of vibrational attraction becomes. It is absolutely essential that you find some time to do things that you love to do. And you take care of yourself in this way. No matter how busy your life already is, find a time to do things that you love to do. Researchers are discovering that what you are feeling is actually more important than what you are thinking or saying. Again, what you are feeling is way more important than what you are thinking or saying. Your emotions never lie. They are true indicators of thoughts that you have had or whether or not you are acting in accordance to your own personal truth, your heartfelt desires. Don't ignore them or try to reason for them and feelings in any way. First, just notice them. Don't ignore or try to reason your feelings away. They are not in a positive range. If they are not in a positive range, hope, expectation, acceptance, appreciation, love, and joy. Either release them or simply choose a better thought. This means choosing a thought that creates a better feeling. Or simply changing that what it is that you are doing and doing something that you are enjoying instead. Go for a walk. Put some music on. Pet the cat. Take charge and do something to shift you back into the positive range of emotions. Everything you see happening is a consequence of which you are. David R. Hawkins Internal and external feedback. Remember joy is your internal guidance system. It is your very own personal internal feedback device. It is your feeling of exciting or happiness and joyfulness. Then chances are that you are on right tr the right track for living in alignment with your personal truth. If you're feeling depressed, sad, or miserable, you probably are not. It's as simple as that. What you are in the state of joy and happiness, you're doing something right. So keep doing it. Pay attention to what you are feeling, how you are feeling, and keep your compass heading set for joy. Your happiness is the very moment. Your happiness in this very moment is the key to attracting more happiness in the future. Now, in addition to this internal feedback, you are also constantly receiving external feedback, messages from the universe. This feedback comes from many forms and consists of subtle but not so subtle signals that you get from other people, situations or events in your life. You have surely experiences those times when things just seem to click and everything comes together for you smoothly and effortlessly. You feel supported in your actions and your end of wars. This is external feedback telling you that you are on course in stark contrast there are times when you meet resistance in every turn and nothing seems to go well no matter how hard you try this is the universe providing external feedback to protect you and to let you know that you are off course you are swimming upstream against the current these internal external feedback systems will let you know when you are on the right path and when you are on the wrong one you simply learn to read learn to pay attention and then of what they are telling you and they will guide you if you let them. Every time I've done something that doesn't feel right, it's ended up not being right. Mario Cuomo. 
Naturally, there will be times in our lives when sadness, grief, and sorrow are present. There is no natural ebb to flow in life that without the lows we would have appreciate without the highs. We would not appreciate the highs without the lows. Without the darkness, we would not appreciate the light. These painful times are often highly underrated opportunities of emotional, spiritual growth. They can provide us with much needed frame of reference and help us by contrast comparison to recognize the appreciate the many blessings in our lives. Sometimes you have to have that hardship and the low to appreciate that contrast of what your blessings are in your life. It is obvious and it is obviously more difficult to keep our thoughts and feelings positive in the face of pain and darkness. But just know that do and you do have a choice about how you respond to or perceive any situation. There really are no good or bad events in your lives at all. We just have our own per preconceived ideas or perceptions about certain things from which will make us so, from which them so for us. Everything that happens to our lives provide an opportunity to grow in some way. They give us a chance to grow. Try to remember that any seemingly negative event can also become the seed of something beautiful and beneficial. There's no mistakes, no coincidences. All events are blessings given to us to learn from. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross Positive and Negative Emotions You may have noticed that when your feelings are grateful, happy, or joyful, there's a sense of lightness and expansion. You feel connected. You feel alive. This is your natural state of being. This is what your life was intended to be. Strive to live in a state of joy, wonder, and gratitude. These expansion positive emotions feel good and raise your vibrational frequencies. In this place of love and joy, you are one with God, and you are always the magnet of all your beauty and abundance that the world has to offer. Negative emotions, on the other hand, such as hatred, anger, jealousy, fear, create the opposite effect. They lower your vibration frequencies and make you feel anxious, tense, and constricted. They can create physical alignments, ailments, and disease. Negative emotions invariably create a sense of separation and feelings of disconnection. They are all like a stone wall, a barrier to the joy from which and who you really are. These emotions are effectively blocking the flow of positive energy into your life and will only serve to attract more negative energy. So. If you've been holding on to feelings of anger, fear, resentment, and betrayal, now it's time to let them go. Release those old thoughts and patterns of behavior. Start living in the present. By focusing on your pain and anger, you are only drawing even more negative and unhealthy circumstances into your life. You need to make room for the positive feelings and experiences that you want to attract. Anger makes you smaller, while forgiveness forces you to grow beyond what you were. Cherie Carter Scott Forgiveness The act of forgiveness is a necessary and truly transfer, transformational process. The act of forgiveness. You must be willing to forgive any person, any situation that has caused you pain and release them. By hanging on to old negative thoughts and emotions, you are only harming yourself and attracting even more negative thoughts. It has been said that when you are unwillingly to forgive someone, it is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to get sick. So, just bless the person or the situation and wish them well. Forgive them, let them go, and be willing to forgive yourself as well, if need be. By acknowledging your positive past and releasing your negative past, you can also make room for the beautiful future. True forgiveness is extremely cathartic. Cathartic. It will cleanse you and set you free. It is an incredible, powerful process that wants you to immediately shift from the place of pain and anger to a higher vibrational frequency of love. If you haven't forgiven yourself something, how can you expect to forgive others? If you haven't forgiven yourself something, Dolores Huerta. Since the law of attraction responds to the energy vibrations of your thoughts and emotions, you need to focus your attention on the things that bring you into a state of positive vibration. Many experts of the law of attraction say that nothing is more important than feeling good. So, find time to do things that bring you joy and make you happy. Listen to the music you love. Take a walk on the beach. Do something nice for someone else. Treat yourself well. Make a conscious decision to choose thoughts that you are positive and be in a vibrational match with from which you want to attract into your life. Be intentional and deliberate in your creation of positive feelings and circumstances, and the universe will respond accordingly. You must bring yourself into an alignment from which you are asking for, from which your joy is, from which your appreciation is. That's what the feelings that has what feelings of passion is. You must bring yourself into alignment from which you are asking for. That's what joy is. That's what appreciation is. That's what the feeling of passion is. But when you're feeling despair, or fear, or anger, then those are strong indicators that you are not aligned right now with what you are asking for Esther Hicks remember nobody else can tell you how to tell you how to feel only you can make that decision if you find yourself feeling bad then you need to look at the creatings of what it is creating your negative feelings it's not an external thing it's you 
and the judgments, beliefs, and ideas that you have about those external things. So, the way you choose to perceive a situation will determine your emotional response, and you can deliberately choose to see anything and everything in a positive light. You must make a conscious decision to choose happiness. Choose optimism. Choose to live in a place of constant gratitude and joy. Settle for nothing less than magnificence in your life. Your emotional fuels your energy. Your emotions fuel your energy. And your energy fuels your future. Dwell not on the past. Use it to illustrate a point. Then leave it behind. Nothing really matters except for what you do now in this instant of time. From this moment onwards, you can be entirely a different person. From this moment onward, an entirely different person, filled with love and understanding, ready with all outstretched hands, uplifted and a positive aura in every thought and deed. Eileen Caddy Chapter 5 Focus on the Positive Make a conscious decision to focus on the positive. The law of attraction doesn't filter out the information we provide. It doesn't decide what is better for us. We have a free will and we decide from which we want to focus our energy and our attention. The universe just reflects it back to us. In the focus of our attention on something, either positive or negatively, it will simply respond that with more of that. So, it is really important for you to focus on what do you want, not what you don't want. On what do you want? Everything you want, want it. Like it. Attract it. It will come right to you. Everything will. It's really important to focus on what you do want. State your desires in a positive way. Your mind works in pictures. So if you say, I don't want to be mad, then you're creating the picture in your vibrations of being mad. The universe only receives the frequency of mad and responds to that. You must focus on the opposite of what you don't want. In this case, it would be better of a choice to say, I want to be more loving and accepting of the way things are. More loving and accepting of the way things are. Once you replace negative thoughts with positive ones, you'll start having positive results. Willie Nelson Basically, you need to avoid sending mixed signals to the universe and those around you. They will hinder your ability to attract and manifest in a clear and powerful way. For example, when you are against something, you are actually recreating it. You're recreating more of those things that that's from which you were trying to eliminate. If you are an anti-war, think again. The operate word there is war, and you exactly get more than you'll exactly get you will get more of that. A better choice is to be pro-peace. The universe will receive the vibration of peace and respond accordingly. The war on terrorism has created more terrorism. The war on terrorism has created more terrorism. Violence attracts violence. Love attracts more love. Make this simple change in your life. Make a conscious effort to restruct the way you think and speak and avoid giving any unnecessary energy. And the things you don't want in your life, whenever possible, avoid subjecting yourself and your thoughts and your emotions to be to the negative people and influences in your life. We cannot become what we need to be by remaining what we are. Max Dupree Be aware that negativity can be insidious. It sneaks into our lives through the evening news and daily paper. It's such a common place that it almost seems normal. We have become nearly immune to the daily doses of war, crime, violence, corruption. Make a stand here. Refuse to give it any attention. Refuse to give it your focus. You have to stop attending to these things that you don't want. Stop talking about them. Stop reading about them. Stop talking about how bad they are. Focus only on what you want to attract more of. Try this. Just listen carefully to this. Stop from now on a talking, thinking, reading, seeing anything that's just negative and start talking and focus only on, focus only on what you want to attract more of. Remember, where your attention goes, your energy flows. It's not surprisingly that most of us have a tendency to phrase things in a negative way without necessarily meaning to do so. It's simply a bad habit. Remember from this point on to focus only on what you do want. Do this not only with your own internal thoughts, but in your own communication and with others as well. Try to avoid the uses of any limiting or negative language. Every single thought you have, every word you speak, sends a message to the universe. You are continually placing your order for the future of life experiences. Try replacing your negative messages with positive ones. Here's a few examples. Instead of thinking, I don't want to be late, think, I want to be on time. Instead of thinking, I don't want to forget, think, I want to remember. Instead of thinking, I can't, think, I am beginning to. Instead of saying, don't slam the door, say, please close the door gently. Instead of saying, your room's a mess, say, please keep your room clean. Instead of saying, stop making so much noise, please say, please be a little more quiet. Think about this for a moment. If you tell someone, don't knock the glass over, you'll spill the milk. 
What is the image that pops into your mind? Naturally, you envision the glass being knocked over in the puddle of milk. You need to avoid creating your thoughts and the pictures and energy vibrations of the things that you don't want. And stay focused on those things and images and that are harmony with what you do want to create in your life. By doing so, you will also avoid implanting the images of what you don't want in the minds of others and in the universal mind. We have a tendency to focus on what we don't want in so many areas of our lives, even when it comes to our own health. Think of how often we face on an illness disease that we become completely preoccupied with the problem and not the desired outcome. We tend to give our focus on entirely the illness and all the entails instead of focusing on being healthy. Since your focusing is expanded on what's directing your energy and thoughts of those of being well, keep your thoughts positive and optimistic and see yourself as a healthy and whole. This positive energy, thoughts and visualizations, affirmations, prayer and meditation combined with whatever medical treatments you choose to seek will serve you to enhance the healing process. Remember, in every aspect of your life, you can keep your focus on as much as possible as you want from of what it is that you do want and not on what you don't want. The secret of health for both mind and body is not to mourn for the past, worries about the future, or to anticipate troubles, but to live in the present moment wisely and earnestly. Buddha Think about how much time we typically spend each day discussing our problems, focusing on what's wrong in our lives. From now on, make a commitment to shift your energy and start thinking and speaking on more positive in a more positive way. Make it a point to start focusing on what is right in your life. Start paying attention to where your attention is going, and you'll be surprised and realize just how frequently you think. Speak or act with your focus inadvertently on the opposite of what you really want. Remember, you are always attracting something, so stop detracting what you don't want and start attracting what you do want. Direct your attention only on those things that you are worthy of and those things that are, are worthy of your energy and that are in direct alignment with your dreams and goals. By this way, it's okay to notice what you don't want. Just use it as a first step in your process of deciding what you do want. Try to get out of the habit of giving it so much of your energy and attention. Think about what you don't want just as long as enough to help ident ident think about what you don't want just long enough to help identify what it is that you do want this will tell you this will tell you by comparison what it is that you would rather have and help provide you with some sort of clarity remember to redirect your focus back to the positive and move on become a vibrational match for the future you desire focus on the good within yourself and others focus on the light and the beauty in your life the person who sends out positive thoughts activates the world around him positively and draws back to him positive results Dr. Norman Vincent Peale Chapter 6 Abundance Abundance is a natural state of being. Anything you wish for can flow effortlessly into your life if you understand and apply the law of attraction. We live in a world that seems to emphasize scarcity and lack, and yet the truth is, this is an abundant universe. There's no scarcity, there is no lack. There's more than enough food, money, joy, happiness, spiritual fulfillment, and love for everyone. If you want to create abundance of your life in your life, then focus on love. Be the love you want to attract. Become more loving and generous with others and with yourself. By creating the vibration of love, you will automatically draw more love into your life. Focus on whatever it is that you want to create more of in your life. And remember to be grateful for what you already have. Gratitude itself is a form of abundance, and it's a vibrational frequency of gratitude and appreciation, and it will automatically attract even more to be grateful for. Abundance is not something we acquire. It is something that we tune into. There's no scarcity of opportunity to make the living of what we love. There is only one scarcity of resolve to make it happen. Wayne Dyer For example, if you want to create a financial abundance in your life, then start by focusing on your prosperity and money flowing into your life. Envision the checks coming into the mail. Write yourself a check and the sum money you wish to manifest this year. Post this in a visible location. Every time you see it, believe that it will be possible. Make a donation to your favorite charity and know that you can afford it. You must be willing to give in order to receive. Imagine just how amazing it will feel to complete a financial freedom. Get to that point. Envision various things that you will do, the places you will go, how it will change your life. Really? Let yourself just feel it as though you already have the prosperity to contribute and give back within your community. Imagine how good it feels to help others and really make a difference in their lives. Remember to take a moment to be thankful for everything that you already have. By doing this, you are already creating vibrational matches for the financial abundance that you want to attract into your future life. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't also take action. It simply means that 
to take in order to create a receive and abundance in your life you must be willing to move towards your goals on an internal level as well as an external level you must be clear about your desires in this case financial abundance believe it will happen and as an extension of your belief you must be willing to take all the normal logical action steps to make that make sense along with any inspired actions that occur to you you must be willing to follow your inspired impulses maintain a vibrational match of what you want to attract and trust that the results are already being created for you you are no longer fighting the current but moving effortlessly downstream with the natural rhythm and flow of life whatever we are waiting for peace of mind contentment grace the inner awareness of simple abundance it will surely come to us but only when we are ready to receive it with an open and grateful heart Sarah Ban Breathnock the entire universe will support you abundantly in every way when you want to move with this kind of purpose and intention in the direction of your dreams it will respond to with the vibrations of passion and commitment it will respond to the vibration of your passion and commitment so start paying attention to many synchronous synchronicities in your life and become aware of the opportunities ideas people and resources that you're attracting be open to them be willing to think outside the box new opportunities will present themselves in a surprising way and, and and also in surprising ways do what you love to do be passionate about it and believe in yourself if you're willing to invest yourself wholeheartedly in your dreams then all that is necessary in resources is to include money and the rest will follow now if you're willing to invest yourself wholeheartedly in your dreams then all the necessary resources including the money will follow there's no order of difficulty in the universe there is no difficulty in the order of the universe there is no scarcity of money in the world if you are currently in debt then figure out a payment plan to commit to it and then shift your focus away from debt and start focusing on wealth and how you're creating it instead not what we have but what we enjoy constitutes our abundance what we enjoy John Petit Sen basically the universe will respond abundantly to vibrations of whatever you are passionate about focused upon committed to and from which you truly believe is possible Whatever you focus on expands, so don't allow yourself to entertain any limited thoughts or beliefs. Focus your thoughts and feelings and energy instead on expansiveness and the unlimited possibilities before you. Use the power of your conscious and subconscious mind to create a vibrational match for the abundance you desire and deserve. Be sure to also take the time to appreciate all the amazing abundance that is already present in your life and open yourself up to receiving all the good that the universe has to offer. Through the law of attraction, the universe will respond to the vibrations of your sincere gratitude and appreciation for even greater abundance. Use the law of attraction to attract abundance in every area of your life. This is an abundant universe. There are no limits. Just as the ocean doesn't care if you come to it with a thimble, a cup, a bucket, a tank car of water, neither does the universe. Abundant love, joy, health and wealth and happiness are yours for the asking. They are your natural right. All you have to do is claim them. You can have anything you want if you want it badly enough. You can be anything you want to be. Do anything set aside to accomplish if you just hold that desire with singleness of purpose. Abraham Lincoln Chapter 7 Purpose and Passion Find your purpose and passion in life. Each one of us is born with a unique life purpose. We are all here for a reason, and we are here to serve each other. We are like individual cells in a body, each of us performing our own unique functions and collectivity serving the being as a whole. A life of purpose is not only a true expression of who you really are, it is your gift to the world, and the world needs what you have to offer. When you're living your life on purpose, you will find greater fulfillment and joy in all that you do. The universe will support you in all of your end of wars. When you are living in alignment with your purpose, your passion, and your inner truth. The purpose of life is to live a life of purpose. Richard Leder. So, you must take time to look deeply within yourself and identify your own personal mission and purpose in life. This is best done through quiet contemplation, prayer, and meditation. But there are a few things that you can do right now to get started. You can begin to internalizing, internalizing the facts that there are no accidents and that you are indeed here on the planet for a reason. You have a purpose in life and in this world, you and your contributions matter. Most of us are not really quiet or quite clear about what our purpose is. And we haven't taken the time to search our souls to discover our true calling. We've gotten sidetracked with bills, responsibilities, work, too little spare time to even find out what we can do to even enjoy. This is to compromise to who you really are and what you have to offer the world. 
You must give priority to discovering your real mission in life. You are not living to your fullest potential or contributing to your fullest abilities unless you are living a life of purpose. Your true passion should feel like breathing. It's that natural. Oprah Winfrey. Here's how it works. You've been given the clues of purpose throughout your entire life. You have your own complete, unique gifts, talents, interests, strengths, and qualities, and you are meant to use them. The things that bring you the greatest joy in life and make you feel really alive are another clue to your purpose. So, what it boils down to is really quite simple. You are meant to do what brings you joy, and your gifts and talents are meant to be have contribution to the world. A life lived with purpose and intention is one that will have honor and nourish your spirit in the deepest level while simultaneously contributing to the world around you, defining your purpose. Take a few moments of still, quiet time to clear your mind of any distractions. The techniques below are a way to logically begin the process of defining your purpose, but you must ultimately want to answer these questions from a deeper place of consciousness through prayer and meditation as well. Start by making a list of all the times that you can remember in your life that you have made and made you feel most truly alive and joyful. All the times that made you feel most truly alive and joyful. The times I have felt the most alive and joyful. Write a list, one through. Look closely at this list and ask yourself which of these experiences has in common. Make a note of it. A common element is an indication of what brings you joy. And what brings you joy is an indication of your life's purpose. Now consider the following question and write down your answers. What are my natural gifts? Write down these questions answers. What are my natural gifts? One through. What are my skills and talents? One through. What do I love to do? One through. When do I feel the most alive? Write one through. When am I passionate and what am I passionate about? What am I passionate about? One through. What brings me the greatest joy in life? One through. When do I feel the best about myself? What are my personal strengths and characteristics? What have others always said that I'm really good at? And how do I most enjoy interacting with people? And what would I change if the world, what would I change in the world if I could? What are the common characteristics of your answers of all these questions? What are the common characteristics of your answers to all of these questions? What do these answers have in common with the list that you've made earlier? Now ask through prayer and meditation for clarity and divine guidance and inspiration. Ask to be shown what you can do to the best of your gifts for joyful and joyful places within yourself to not only earn a living but to be of service to the world. Now take your answers from these questions and list and consolidate them into two or three complete sentences. You are in the process of defining your life's purpose, your personal mission statement based upon you authentically, of who you authentically are in your unique interests, gifts, talents, and passions. And write down, my life purpose, in a paragraph of sentences, my life purpose. By creating your life purpose statement, you are defining who you are and who you want to be, and how you want to show up in the world and open your mind and your heart to the possibilities that already exist and listen to the answers in your prayers and become aware of the ideas, inspiration and opportunities that present themselves. Things will begin to unfold for you exactly the way they are meant to and within the time frame that you serve the highest good. Follow your inspired thoughts and ideas and dream big. You don't have to know exactly how to turn your mission statement into reality yet, but once you define your purpose, just be open to various possibilities that arise for you. Be willing to let go and let God. If you want to be happy, set a goal that commands your thoughts, liberates your energy, and inspires your hope. Andrew Carnegie. Be willing to let go and let God. Whenever you're doing what you love and passionate about, the universe will automatically respond through the law of attraction and support you in every way. Imagine your life and work filled with meaning and purpose and passion. Imagine how good it feels to do what you love to do and have fun doing it. Make money and make a significant difference in the world. The happiest and most successful people in life are those who've managed to structure their careers and activities around their gifts and passions in life. By doing so, you have attracted all the ideas, resources, people, finances that were needed to create the lives of your dreams. These have and they have created a vibrational match for joy and abundance in their lives by identifying their purpose, believing in their dreams, and moving forward confidently in the direction of their goals and desires. Start living consciously and on purpose, on purpose. Everything that you do, 
Every activity that you participate in should be in alignment with your joy, higher truth, and your mission in life. Don't withhold your true gifts and talents from world any lo from the world any longer. A life lived with purpose and intention is one that is fulfilled on every level. Work is meant to be fun. Life is meant to be fun. The world needs you to have that to offer. You were put on this earth for a reason, and you must begin to honor that reason. Let all that you do flow from your purpose and passion, and you will experience and attract true happiness, abundance, and success. Create a life, create a life filled with passion and significance. Create a life of purpose. Follow your bliss. There is one quality that one must possess to win, and that is the definiteness, the definiteness of purpose, and the knowledge of what one wants, and the burning desire to possess it. Napoleon Hill Chapter 8 Define Your Dreams What are your dreams? Give deep thought to what you want to create in your life. Consider each of the various areas of your life and focus on what you do want, not what you don't. Get in touch with your inner truth, your authentic dreams, goals, your heartfelt desires. Honor these and own them without fear, shame, or inhibition. Your dreams and desires are not subject to anyone else's approval. They are yours and yours alone but you have to define them in order to achieve them. You deserve. You deserve to have whatever you truly want in your life, and all of your dreams are valid if they are important to you. It doesn't matter if your dream is romantic relationships, new car, new skill, vacation, financial prosperity, and by the way, contrary to popular belief, there's nothing wrong with desiring financial wealth. You can do a lot of good in the world with greater financial assets in the bank. It's only the attachment to money that becomes problematic. So just remember, that you must give in order to receive and keep your intentions high. Your dreams and aspirations should serve to ignite a passion within you and this passion will not only inspire you to achieve them, it will also send a positive vibrational frequency out into the world. Naturally, through the law of attraction, the universe will respond accordingly. Remember that all things are possible. Don't limit or censor your visions for the future. You must believe in yourself and believe that you are worthy. Keep all of your actions, dreams, goals, desires in alignment with your life's purpose. Decide what you really want your future to look like. We've got to have a dream if we're going to make a dream come true. Dennis Waitley There are seven important areas of your life in which you might want to consider as you begin to define your goals and dreams. Seven key areas in life. Number one, personal goals, which are things you want to do, be, and have. Relationships with friends, family, romantics, and coworkers. Health and body your wellness, fitness, body image, career and education, your job, school, career goals, recreation, sports, hobbies, fun, vacations, financial, income, savings, and investments, contribution to charities and community service. Do you have any idea what your personal goals and aspirations really are? Have you identified your life's purpose? What is it you love to do? What are you passionate about? What do you want to accomplish? Where do you want to go? What do you want to be? What can you give to others? What causes speak to you? What are your intentions? Unfortunately, most of us has given little time to the thought of these questions and we've gotten so caught up in the hustle and bustle of our daily routines that we just haven't taken the time. We're pretty good at itemizing the things that we haven't and haven't been going so well and the things that we have to complain about. So we're pretty clear about what we don't want, but having given the consideration to what we do want, in order to attract what you want in life, you must first take time to clearly identify your dreams and desires. To the person who does not know where he wants to go, there is no favorable wind. Seneca. Think of it like this. When you go into your local Starbucks, do you place your order? Do you say, I don't want tea, I don't want espresso, and I don't want cappuccino? Of course not. You place your order for a tall, non-fat mocha, easy chocolate, easy extra whipped cream, total clarity, specificity, specificity, and the absolute confidence that you will get exactly what you desired. To operate in harmony with the law of attraction, you must place your order for life in the same way. You need to clarify your goals, be specific, stop settling for whatever just happens to come your way in life and take ownership of the fact that you can actively participate in the creation of your own future by clearly stating your desires. The bottom line is this, is if you don't really know exactly what it is you're asking for, then how can you expect to get it? So it is imperative 
that you take the time to decide what you really want to attract into your life. Write it down and be perfectly clear about it. You must see your goals clearly and specifically before you can set out for them. Hold them in your mind until they become second nature. Les Brown Create your dream list. Your dream list will be a comprehensive overview of your dreams, goals, and desires. It will represent what you want, what to be, what you want to be, what you want to do, what you want to have. It will achieve in these areas of your life. Later on, you want to prioritize your list and focus on the attention on the certain areas. But now, it is best you just go ahead and look at the bigger picture. There are a few techniques that you can use to help you identify your desires and clarify your goals. To identify your desires and clarify your goals. The first technique is the creation of a T-chart. It's a type of chart you see as the example provided. It's a very effective way to identify what you do want to do in your life looking briefly at the things you don't want. Consider each of the seven key areas of your life to address one area subject as a, at a time, such as a career, personal goals, relationships. You decide what your particular topic within that area is. For instance, within the relationship category of your life, you may want to focus on the topic as my ideal romantic relationship on the top and start by writing a line down the middle of the paper and that's your t-chart what I don't want will be on the left all the things you don't want on the right will be all the things you do want and write a list in the chart writing it down you don't want areas of your life in the column and then in the other column turn it around and make it the opposite statement saying what it is that you do want I suggest creating a t-chart for each area of your life and listing and what it is that you don't want in the left side and listing the things you do want on the right side stating it in a positive way the charts for each area of your life on the pages to follow so by the way this is just an example of it being okay to start noticing what you don't want in order to really clarify what you do want to attract in your life see when you clarify clearly what you don't want then you make it obvious what it is you do want in your life to attract into your life it is often helpful to take a brief look at what you don't want here's an example of this type of chart subject would be relationship subject and that would be my ideal romantic relationship would be the topic what I don't want on the left column someone who watches TV all weekend a smoker or a drinker an angry or abusive person well, on the right you would put what I do want someone who enjoys an active lifestyle someone who cares about their health and a kind of compassionate person so use these charts to appear on the following pages for each of the seven areas of your life and this will help you clarify your goals and desires when you have completed them go back and cross off the don't wants list on the left side of each of the charts and from now on just use the right side of each of these lists they focus on what you do want in your life and there's no need to give any further attention to the energy of the list of what you don't want and by the way the simple act of crossing out what you don't want is empowering and it feels good so when you're finished, combine the list of things that you do want to do on a single list. And you can do a dream list of pages. A dream list page and pages will, will provide to use on a separate piece of paper. But be sure to write out your dreams and goals in complete sentences and leave some room for expansion. This is the beginning of your dream list. By filling out these pages, you will be one step closer to achieving them. Clarity is power. Buckminster Fuller. Clarity is power. You will want to be thorough when you make your dream list. For instance, you don't want to get out of the house and you don't want to get the house of your dreams only to realize that you can't afford the mortgage and forget to really specify your financial goals. So be specific, comprehensive as possible. Once you are finished, there are a few questions that you might want to consider in defining your dreams. So take a few minutes to review the questions on page 80 and we'll make an appropriate addition to your dream list. And make any appropriate additions to your dream list. Here are charts for each of the seven key areas in your life and dream list the charts the personal goals is the subject personal goals what I do want what I don't want second subject is relationships what I do want what I don't want health and body what I do want what I don't want career and education recreation financial and contribution and then make a dream list a dream list 1 through 50. Now ask yourself the following questions. What is my life purpose? What are my dreams? What are my goals? What am I grateful for? What makes me happy? How would I like to grow personally? How would I like to grow spiritually? How is my perfect relationship look like? What would my ideal family life consist of? What is something that I've always wanted to do? What would I like more of in my life? What would I like to do more of in my life? What would I like to do in my life? Where do I want to travel? Where would I like to live? 
What would my dream home be like? What career could I ideally choose or create for myself? What are my financial goals? How can I give back within my community? Which causes or charities I'd like, do I like, to be more involved with? If I could change the world, how would I make it a better place? How would I make it a better place? The questions on the previous page may inspire you and help you identify the additional dreams, goals, and desires. And take your time. Give these questions some serious thought and consideration and add any of these responses that you wish to on your dream list. The first principle of success is desire. Knowing what you want, desire is planting of the seed. Robert Collier 101 Goals List There are no limits on your dreams and goals. The whole world is out there just waiting for you. This is an inspirational technique that you might want to try as well. A great process for clarifying some of your more long-term goals and dreams is to make a list of 101 goals that you'd like to accomplish before you die. 101 things that you would like to be or do or have. At age 15, John Goddard, the world-famous adventurer, made a list of 127 goals. When he was 15, he wanted to achieve before he died. He included things like visiting the Great Pyramids, learning scuba diving, Great Wall of China, visit climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, and reading the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. He is now in his 70s, and he has achieved 109 of his goal list. In his late 20s, Lou Holtz, the former football coach of Notre Dame, wrote down 108 goals he wanted to achieve, including winning a national championship, eating dinner at the White House, meeting the Pope, landing a plane on an aircraft carrier. He is also in his 70s, and he's achieved 102 of his 108 goals. Inspired by both stories, I made a list of 109 goals 17 years ago. So far, I've achieved 63 of those goals. Typing 50 words a minute, appearing in a movie, learning to ski, windsurfing, writing my best-selling book, traveling to various exotic locations, buying my dream house, having a syndicated newspaper column, my writing down of the list of 101 goals, see following pages, and review it, your list, every week so you can activate the law of attraction to set up these circumstances that will help you achieve them. You will begin to notice the kinds of seemingly miraculous events occurring in your life. Some goals will take longer to achieve than others, but they can all eventually come true. This list of lifetime goals may inspire some additions to your dream list as well. You are successful the moment you start moving towards a worthwhile goal. Chuck Carlson By the way, if your goals and dreams benefit others as well as yourself, then the vibration of the intentions resonates in a higher frequency. And Think of the ways to contribute to your family, friends, or community. Be open to finding a cause that really speaks to you personally. Get involved in it. Start tithing with your time and dreams and donations. And because we are really all connected, your commitment to others is also a commitment to yourself. As you achieve the various goals of your 101 goals list, you will want to highlight them or note a date of your accomplishment. This act alone is empowering, and it also gives a way of an acknowledgement to the law of attraction at work in your life. My 101 goals list. Write 100 through 101 goals. Vision is the art of seeing the invisible. Jonathan Swift. By now you should have really well-rounded dreams list going and looked over your specific goals in each area of your life and you should have looked at your goals for the course of your lifetime. You've identified your purpose of your dreams, clearly stated what you want to create in your life. Some of your goals may be short-term goals like losing 25 pounds or taking a vacation to Italy. Others may be long-term such as transforming the education system, increasing environmental awareness in your community, or becoming a millionaire. Prioritize your dream list. Take a few minutes now to prioritize your list and think about which goals and dreams best support your personal mission and statement. In your mission statement, which are the ones that are most important to you at this time of your life? Highlight and underline those items. Concentrate your focus for right now on these particular goals and dreams, the ones that you want to work on first. Your focused thoughts and energy will facilitate the manifestation of those specific goals and dreams with your focus and thoughts and energy. You will come back to the rest of your list and sheer act of creating the list has already sent a message out into the universe. But start with the things that are meant most to your point in life. Remember that your dreams and goals may be changing and may change or evolve over the years. And as you continue to grow and achieve more, your goals will probably grow as much. If you limit your choices only to what seems possible or reasonable, you disconnect yourself from what you truly want and all that is left is a compromise. Robert Fritz Dream big. Don't censor your dreams or a vision with the practicalities and probabilities. You don't need to know every single step that will take to achieve your goal. Just decide what you want. Know that you deserve it. Believe that you can have it. Then release it 
and let it go like it doesn't even matter open yourself up to infinite possibilities watch the miracles unfold all you have to do is decide what you want know you deserve it believe you can have it then release it and let it go open yourself up to the infinite possibilities watch the miracles unfold now consider this possibility if you can figure it out all out on your own then your dream may not be big enough you have created your dream list you have placed your order with the universe it is written request for the future all your dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them Walt Disney chapter 9 living the law of attraction the first step in living the law of attraction is to understand how it works in our lives in the previous chapters we've discussed not only the law of attraction and the way it works in our lives but also taking a look at who we are what we are our connection to the universal source and the role that we played in creating our lives up until now we've been taking a look at just how powerful our thoughts and emotions are we have discussed the importance of releasing the negative and staying in the positive emotional state of attraction in order to be in a vibrational match for our dreams and desires We've acknowledged the amazing agility of our own subconscious mind and the importance of utilizing its unlimited potential to help us attract and create the lives that we've only dreamed of in the past. Now we've only taken the time to define. We have also now taken the time to define our purpose, dreams, and goals and clarify what it is that we want to attract in our lives. Now that you understand a little bit more of how to attract and to how to participate in the process of the law of attraction, you can begin to take responsibility for everything that you are currently of, currently in the process of attracting into your life. You are now aware of the role you play in creating your life. You can no longer create your future accidentally or by default. Taking this to heart because this is your moment, your time to begin consciously, intentionally, and deliberately participating in the creation of the future that you desire. By now you have a pretty good idea of who you are, who you want to be, where you want to go in life, and you have a clear vision of what it is you want to do, be and have. You actually have a desired outcome, a destination in the mind now. And it's the desired outcome like programming an internal GPS system to your chosen destination. Now that you know where you want to go, the universe will guide you and lead you there through the law of attraction. Create your future from your future, not your past. Werner Erhardt. Tools for Living the Law of Attraction in the chapters to follow, you will learn and look at various methods and tools that will help you create and maintain constant states of joy and positive energy. We will address several techniques for stimulating and strengthening your connection to your subconscious mind and inspiring your positive thoughts and emotions. In this section, we will also discuss prayer, meditation, affirmations, visualizations, attitude, appreciation, action, and faith. We will address how to actively become a vibrational match for what it is you want to draw into your life. These tools and techniques will help you make the necessary changes in your life and they will help you harness the power of your subconscious mind as well as the power of the universe. Jack Canfield's Dream Big. Create the big life of your dreams by dreaming big onto this journey. We would like to offer you audios, inspirational wallpapers, visit .com. The fully life. To fully live in the law of attraction and create the life of your dreams. Use your affirmations daily. Use your gratitude journal daily. Use your vision book daily. Use the time that you spend in a day in prayer on meditation. Stay true to your purpose. Believe in your dreams. Focus on the positive. Live in a state of constant gratitude. Visualize the life you desire. Be passionate about life. Be generous. Be happy. Do the things that make you feel good. Find the best in every situation. Listen to your inner voice. Respond to internal and external feedback. Follow through on your inspired thoughts. Be aware of the miracles all around you. Be willing to take risks. Move forward with confidence. Acknowledge the changes that you see and feel. Remember the law of attraction. Remember the law of attraction. Trust. Release it to God. Source the universe. This is the key to unlocking the law of attraction. This is the key to your future. It's time to internalize your new positive emotions, thought patterns, and beliefs. It's time to really see the future you desire feel the emotions it evokes and believe that this is possible it's time to begin living the law of attraction it's time to begin living your life of your dreams to accomplish great things we must not only act we must also dream but not only plan but also believe Anatole France chapter 10 affirmations 
Affirmations are one of the most powerful ways to create a vibrational match for what you want to attract in your life. Affirmations. Every thought you think, every word you say is an affirmation. Your thoughts and words are declarations of who you think you are and how you perceive the world to be. Every time you think a negative thought or make a self-deprecating comment, you are actually affirming it's a personal truth. Fortunately, the same holds true for positive thoughts and statements. Strong positive affirmations are powerful means for self-transformation. They work as a key element in creating your life and the life you desire and creating it as a life that you desire. They work by purposely replacing limited ideas, negative beliefs, and self-talk that you have taken on and internalized over the years with positive statements that assert. We have changed it with positive statements that assert who you want to be and how you want to experience life. The goal here is to create positive, self-affirming, self-empowering statements that uplift, uplift you and inspire you, that raise your emotion set point. There are two types of affirmations that we will be addressing. A positive affirmation and a goal-specific affirmation. First say to yourself what you would be, then do what you have to do. Epictetus. Epictetus. Positive affirmations. Positive affirmations simply affirm your positive beliefs about yourself and about life. Examples of positive affirmations is, my life is abundant in every way. I am successful in all that I do. My life is filled with love and beauty. I'm grateful for each experience in my life. I'm divinely guided and protected. I'm attracting joy into my life. I am excited to be alive. I believe in all things. I believe that all things are possible. I am loved. I can do anything. I make a difference in this world. These simple declarations of who you want to be and how you want to feel are extremely powerful. They help replace negative limited beliefs that you have taken on in the past. These old negative subconscious thoughts are actually reprogrammed through the use of these positive affirmations into a strong positive feelings and images. You will want to create your own positive affirmations and use them on a daily basis. We have created a place for you too. Write them down on the pages to follow. All of your affirmations will work best when they are read and repeated several times a day. Read and repeated several times a day. Be consistent. It usually takes about 30 days to reprogram even internal thoughts or thought patterns. Say your positive affirmations aloud with feeling and experience the emotions that they evoke for you. Constant repetition carries conviction. For ever more powerful results, you can repeat the while making eye contact with yourself in the mirror. Affirm just how wonderful you are and how great your life is. Feel it. Believe it. Fully receive it with all of your being. You are recreating a self-image, building a positive attitude, and internalizing a more positive belief system. Goal-specific affirmations. Goal-specific affirmations affirm your specific dreams. They affirm your specific dreams, desires, and goals as having already been completed. Goal-specific affirmations are statements that describe a goal that's already been completed pleaded state such as I'm celebrating the feeling light and alive I'm I'm celebrating feeling light and alive in my perfect body weight of 165 these affirmations will help you create an emotional experience of having already attracted what it is and what you want the feeling of joy and happiness exhilaration excitement confidence relief inner peace and so on are the vibrational matches for the physical manifestation that you want to attract every thought we think is creating our future. These affirmations create a positive expectation that will achieve these goals. They will increase your desire and motivation to act on these goals and dreams. In addition to that, they actually do something pretty amazing. They begin to literally reprogram the reticular activating system in your brain so that you'll start to become more aware of people, money, resources, ideas that will help you achieve the goals. These resources were always present, but your brain is actually filtering them out. Through the regular use of your affirmations, you will reprogram the filter and expand your perception and awareness. Here are a few guidelines for creating your own goal-specific affirmations. Affirmations are positive. They avoid using words not in any affirmations. Affirmations are stated in the present tense. Believe it's already so. Affirmations are fairly short. Are they are specific? Being your affirmation with I am. Begin it with I am or we are. Affirmations use action words. Feel the emotion when you say the affirmation. Affirmations use action words. 
Affirmations are personal. Make affirmations more of your own behavior, not others. Here's a few examples of goal-specific affirmations. I'm feeling exhilarated and alive, snowboarding down the mountain face on this perfect winter day. I'm feeling proud as I stand looking at the house that I've helped to build for the Habitat for Humanity. I'm excited watching orders pour in over the internet from my new products. I'm feeling so proud to be graduating at the top of my class with honors. I'm looking around me at the faces of the children I'm helping, and I'm thrilled to know that I have already made a difference in their life. I'm thankful receiving another perfect bill of health from my doctor. I'm feeling relaxed and grateful to be sitting here on the beach in Hawaii, with my toes buried in the warm sand, feeling the warmth of the sun on my face. I'm thrilled to open the mailbox and find that yet another check is arrived. I'm happily watching my family as they laugh and frolic in the snow. I'm joyfully driving my new Lexus LS430 down Pacific Coast Highway. I'm effectively communicating my needs and desires to my family. I'm feeling joyful and content as I gaze lovingly into the eyes of my partner. I'm happily stepping through the door of my brand new dream home. It's not what is available or unavailable that determines your level of success or happiness. It's what you convince yourself is true. Dr. Wayne Dyer Now, go ahead and take a few minutes to develop your own positive goal-specific affirmations, creating strong personal affirmations that reinforce your positive beliefs and replace any negative self-talk with strong positive statements. Use the chart on your following pages and write them down. You will want to refer to your dream list too and keep those desires and goals in mind as you write down your specific affirmations. My positive affirmations list. My goal specific affirmations list. How do you use your affirmations? Number one, repeat your affirmations at least three times a day. The best times are the first thing in the morning, the middle of the day, and around bedtime. Work in depth with a few affirmations. This is much more effective than working less frequently with a greater number of them. Say your affirmations aloud, if possible. If not, read them silently in yourself, to yourself. Close your eyes and visualize as your affirmation describes. See the scene through your eyes as if it were happening around you, just the way you would see it in real life. Hear the sounds. See the images that are present when you successfully achieve your affirmation of what it describes, including any other people that would be there. Hear their words of encouragement and congratulations. Feel the emotion that would experience that you'd experience when you achieve the goal. The stronger your feelings are, the more powerful the impact. Repeat this entire process. Each of your affirmations you may also want to try writing your affirmations down on either piece of paper 10, 20 times a day. This is another powerful way to internalize them and imprint them into your subconscious mind is to write it down, your affirmations or goal, 20 times a day. We are what repeatedly what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an action, but a habit. Aristotle by repeating and visualizing your affirmations in this way, you are maximizing the effect of each one and what that means to you personally. The law of attraction will respond to energy, thoughts, images, feelings created by each affirmation, and your subconscious mind will respond to each, storing new beliefs and treating them as reality. Remember, your subconscious mind can't tell the difference between what is real and what is vividly imaged. So if you find the negative or limited responses such as doubt or skepticism, Keep emerging your mind as you're saying the affirmations when you may not want to use one of them releasing techniques when referring to chapter 3. You can also create new affirmations that are opposite of each of the negative thoughts and add these to your daily routine. Make a commitment to use the affirmations every single day. Let them become personal ritual, something you like to look forward to. Doing your affirmations, this is how we reprogram ourselves. Through repetition, association, and emotion, the level of an emotional intensity that you feel while using your affirmations will determine the intensity of the attraction that you create. You are literally reprogramming your beliefs about yourself, the world you live in with each affirmation. The thing you set your mind on is the thing you ultimately become. Nathaniel Hawthorne Chapter 11 Visualization Your ability to visualize your dreams will serve as a catalyst in their creation. Visualization exercises and techniques are incredibly powerful. Some psychologists are now claiming that one hour of visualization is worth seven hours of psych physical effort. Remember, your subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between real experience and vividly imaged experiences. It can differentiate between your remembering, pretending, or actually experiencing the event. It responds to all of them equally. 
Though various visualization techniques can help you fully experience any situation as though it were real, you can create emotional and psychological responses and physiological responses to the situation you're visualizing. Your subconscious mind will internalize this information and store it as truth, and the universe will respond to this vibrational energy with the manifestation that it matches. Visualization is daydreaming with a purpose. Bo Bennett. Here's an example of two-part visualization exercises that paints a vivid picture in your mind and brings home the fact that your thoughts and emotions influence your body as well. As you read the part one, notice how you feel emotionally, physically, and pay attention to how those feelings and sensations differ in part of two of the example. The Skyscraper Visualization, part one. Take a deep breath and let yourself relax. Imagine that you're standing in the middle of a small terrace on the top of the tallest skyscraper in the entire world. Also, imagine that this terrace has no railing. There's nothing at all between you and the vertical drop. As you're standing there, look down at your feet and notice that there's a terrace and what it's made of. And how you're standing on the tile, concrete, asphalt, wood, or stone. Notice the weather is nice, the sun is shining, and there's a soft, cool breeze that you can feel in the warmth of the sun on your face and your arms. What noises do you hear? Maybe there's some pigeons or some birds up there. Maybe you can hear a helicopter flying by or street noises far below. Now walk out to the very edge of the terrace and put your toes right against the edge. Look down the street far, far below. See how incredibly small everything appears to be from way up here. Now as you're doing this, notice how you're feeling. Now slowly walk back to the center of the terrace, still remembering just how you felt when you were standing at the edge and looking down. Most people will not notice and will notice, most people will notice some type of emotional and physical reaction. You may have felt fear or heart racing or palms or sweatiness, dizziness or nausea. You may have experienced a feeling of tension or fear. Part 2. Take a deep breath and let yourself relax. Imagine more that you're standing on top of the same terrace, on top of the same skyscraper as before, only this time. You have a beautiful white feathered wings and you are totally confident in the ability to fly. And you realize that this is totally safe. So you let yourself walk to the edge of the terrace and right when you get there you gently bend your knees, push off and fly. And notice what it feels like to fly. Feel the wind rushing beneath your wings as you soar and glide effortlessly through the sky. Feel the exhilaration and the freedom. After a while let yourself fly to any place on the planet that you really would like to go right now. It might be a favorite vacation spot or a place you'd like to want to see or just want to be alone. A special place that, you're, that you care about. And when you get there, just let yourself gently land and spend a few moments enjoying yourself, doing whatever you would like to do there. And notice how you feel right now, physically and emotionally. Compare the different emotional and physical reactions felt in part one, part two of the visualizations. Notice the lightness, joy, the sense of expansion you feel in part two of this example. Now think about this for a moment. You haven't gone anywhere. You haven't left the room. You've only taken a few minutes to visually imagine these two experiences and yet probably felt very distinct and different emotional and physiological changes occurring. The vivid images you created in your own mind were completely real to your subconscious mind and it responded to your imagined experiences on an emotional and physiological level as though it was actually occurring. You are responsible for the images that you create in your own mind. So if you spend the time and energy imagining the worst case scenarios in your life and then, then you are physically and emotionally responding to those images and attracting the very same type of negative energy and circumstances into your life. You must choose to visualize positive, inspirational, uplifting images in order to create a vibrational match for what it is you want to attract in your life. This is the power of visualization. Formulate and stamp indelibly on your mind a mental picture of yourself as succeeding. Hold this picture tenaciously, never permit it to fade. Your mind will seek to develop the picture. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, again, formulate a stamp indelibly, indelibly in your mind, a mental picture of yourself as succeeding. Hold this picture tenaciously, never permit it to fade. The mind will seek to develop the picture. Create your day. Create your day with this simple visualization. Sit in a comfortable upright position. Close your eyes. Bring your hands together, fingertips touching in your lap. With your spine nice and straight, take several slow, deep breaths, inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your mouth. 
Concentrate on the rise and fall of your stomach, chest, with each bad and breath and each breath. Find yourself becoming more and more relaxed. Now just let your breath find its own natural rhythm, slow, steady, relaxed. Imagine a radiant white light slowly coming up on the left side of your body, st starting at your left foot, gradually coming up your left leg, your left side of your torso, shoulders, to your neck and face, moving right up to the top of your head, slowly moving down the right side of your face, to your neck, shoulders, torso, hip, down your leg, feeling each and every sound in your body with a radiant white light. Now go ahead and do this twice more with your own pace, visualizing and experiencing pure white light coming up on the left side of your body and down the right. With your fingertips still joining in the lab, begin a period of concentration. You may choose to concentrate on a visual symbol, images such as a flower, source of white light, still, lake, anything from which you wish to silently repeat or a word or a seed thought or a mantra such as peace or joy or I am love. Silently repeat the image or thought over and over again without letting other thoughts come into your mind. If your mind does begin to wander, just bring it gently back to your point of concentration and know that your ability to stay focused will increase with practice. Next is receptively and observation. Receptivity. Receptivity and observation separate your hands and place them with palms facing upward in your lap. Relax your mind and just notice and observe wherever your attention goes to thoughts memories, planning, images, worries, sensations, or insights. Just notice and observe from neutral positions. And now, completion. Close both hands lightly and again imagine a luminous white light surrounding you, filling you and protecting you while you are still surrounded by this white light. Visualize this day and the way you would like it to go. You may have to adjust it to unforeseen circumstances, the events that show up, but go ahead and create your day the way you want it to be paying special attention to how you want it to be, how you want to act, and how you want to feel today. Visualize yourself manifesting the qualities you choose for yourself, such as love, joy, courage, strength, patience, perseverance. See yourself interacting with others with a calm, self-assurance, enthusiasm, and clarity. See yourself communicating clearly, stating your desires and intentions, asking for and getting the nurturing you want. Now see the specific steps that you will take to achieving your most important goals and create your day the way you want to go. See the faces and hear the voices of important people in your life congratulating you on the achievements of your goals and the quality of your being. And now imagine the emotions you feel when you're living the day that you want to do it the way you would want to go. Create those feelings in your body right now. Take a few deep breaths and once again place your awareness on the rise and fall of your stomach and the chest as you breathe deeply in and out. Then when you're ready, slowly open your eyes and know that this will be a beautiful day. Aim not for what you are, but for what you could be. Lucas Helmer Your Vision Book Your vision book is probably your most valuable tool. Your vision book, it's your map of the future, a tangible representation of where you're going, it represents your dreams, goals, and your ideal life. Because your mind responds strongly to visual stimulation by representing your desires with pictures, images that you actually strengthen and enhance the vibrational levels, and saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, certainly holds true here. Visualize images, pictures that will stimulate your emotions, and your emotions are vibrational energies that activate laws of attraction. You have already defined your dreams. Now it's time to illustrate them visually. This world is but a canvas to our imaginations. Henry David Thoreau Create a personal vision book that clearly despites the future you wish to create. Find pictures and represent, symbolize experiences, feelings, possessions that you want to attract into your life. Place them in your book. Have fun with the process. Use photographs, magazine cutouts, pictures, internet, whatever inspires you. Be creative. Include not only pictures, but anything that speaks to you. Consider including pictures of yourself in your book. If you do choose one that was taken in a happy moment, you'll also want to post affirmations, inspirational words, quotations, thoughts here. Choose words and images that inspire you, make you feel good. This is a book unlike any other book. You are the author. You are the artist. This is your map. We have created a unique series of visual books designed specifically for adults, teens, children, completed with inspirational quotes, quotations, affirmations, blank templates that you can create your own. This book is a sacred space. It's a place to define your honor, your dreams, goals, and desires. Your vision book is a book unlike any other. You are the author. Just add dreams. 
You can use your vision book to just pick goals, dreams, and all the areas of your life in just one specific area that you are focusing on. Keep your life's purpose in mind and refer to the list that you created. When defining your dreams, keep it neat. Be selective about the place you are in your vision book. It's not a good idea to avoid creating or cluttering a chaotic book. You don't want to attract chaos into your life. Now remember, these are your dreams, so choose them well. Use only the words and images that best represent your purpose, your goal and future, that inspire positive emotion in you. There's beauty and simplicity. Again, there's beauty and simplicity. There's beauty and simplicity and in clarity. Too many images and too much information will be distracting and harder to focus on. If you are working on visualization, creating changes in many areas of your life, then you may want to use more of one vision book. For instance, you might use a vision book for your personal goals, dreams, another for your career and financial goals. You might want to keep one for your vision of your office and the means of inspirational and affirmations at the office. How to use your vision book. Try keeping your vision book on the nightstand next to your bed. Leave it standing open or in a position often to where it's comfortable with. Spend time each morning, evening, visualizing, affirm, affirming, believing, and internalizing the goals. The time you spend visualizing in the events just before bed is especially powerful. The thoughts and images present in your mind during the last 45 minutes before you go to sleep are the ones that will replay themselves repeatedly in your subconscious mind throughout the night. And the thoughts and images that you begin each day will help you create a vibrational match for the future you desire. As some time goes by in your dreams, you'll begin to manifest and look at these images that represent your achievements and for gratitude and how long and well your law of attraction is working in your life. Acknowledge that it is working. Don't remove the pictures or images that represent the goals you've already achieved. These are powerful visual reminders of what you've already consciously deliberately attracted into your life. Now remember to write down the date you created your vision book. Universe loves speed and you'll be amazed at how quickly the law of attraction responds to your energy, commitment, and desires. Much like time capsules, this book will document your personal journey, your dreams, and your achievements for that particular year. It will become a record of your growth, awareness, and expansion that you will want to keep and reflect back upon the years. The biggest adventure that you can ever take is to live the life of your dreams. Oprah Winfrey it's a good idea to create a new vision book each year. As you continue to grow, evolve, expand, your dreams and aspirations also continue to grow, evolve, and expand, and this will help you continue to stay focused, motivate, and inspired. You might want to make this a new tradition within your family, and if you have children or younger siblings, help them to create their own book and encourage their dreams too. You will be amazed on how truly insightful, empowering, and inspirational and fun this process can be. This vision books. This vision books are meant to keep and be kept and cherished. Their chronicles not only your dreams and growth of achievements, but there's nothing more precious than your dreams in this book, and it's the face of your dreams. These beautiful words and pictures represent your future. They create a vibrational match for what you want to attract and create in your life. Using your vision book. Look at your vision book often and feel the inspiration it provides. Hold it in your hands and really internalize the future it represents. Read your affirmations and inspirational words aloud. See yourself living in the manner. Feel yourself in the future that you've designed. Believe that it's already yours. Be grateful for the good that's already present in your life. Acknowledge any goals that you've already achieved. Acknowledge the changes that you've seen and felt. Acknowledge the presence of God in your life. Acknowledge the law of attraction at work in your life. And look at just before going to bed, look at it. And the first thing you look at upon rising. Envision your future. Imagine the possibilities and know that they are real. A dream is your creative vision of your life in the future. You must break out of your current comfort zone and become comfortable with the unfamiliar and the unknown. Dennis Waitley Chapter 12 Attitude Your attitude can make or break almost any situation. It's the energy that you bring into the room. You can have a positive attitude about the events in your life. And you can come from a place of complaint and misery, but you decide. You can consciously choose to respond in a positive way in almost any event or circumstance. A positive attitude is simply a choice you make. You can change your attitude and change your life. Any fact facing us is not as important as our attitude towards it, for that determines our success or failure. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale Now we all know people with negative attitudes. They are not the ones who are constantly on the who complain, whine and moan. Nothing seems to go right for them. They are perpetual victims of life. They're unpleasant to be around and they seem quite literally, they bring us down. 
This is because they are operating on a lower frequency through the law of attraction. They are attracting even more lower energies of complaint, what they complain about. And the reasons they stay stuck in their negative lifestyle is because they are constantly focusing on their thoughts and energy on negative presence and negative past. By doing so, they are creating the same future over and over. Remember, you are continually talking about what you continually talking about comes about. On the other hand, we also know people with positive attitudes, the ones who always seem to be happy, the ones who really seem to have a handle on the things in life, they're more fun, they have energy levels, and they feel great, they're fun to be around, they are operating on a higher frequency. Good things always seem to just come their way, no matter how they are, they're always happy. Through the law of attraction, they're actively participating in the creation of a happy life by focusing on and appreciating the positive aspects of their current life. They have positive expectations for a great future. People are just as happy as they make up their own minds to be. Abraham Lincoln Surround yourself with these positive, nourishing, uplifting people whenever you can. Spend your time with spiritually evolved people who love and support you in healthy ways. Those who encourage your growth and apply your successes. Wrap it up and support network and inspirational people with positive attitudes and energy. They also want to consider finding a place of worship, charity organization, a place where you will worship. Some more the group have an alignment with your desires for personal growth. You can also form your own little small group of people who share common interests and goals. There's a power in numbers and the higher mindset goals is it becomes present with groups such as this. By gathering together on a regular basis with a stated purpose and intention, you'll all experience a greater growth and result in a shorter period of time. The assembly of the mastermind group is that it provides a unique form of shared ideas, feedback, brainstorming, honesty, accountability, and inspiration. It has been proven tool a proven tool for growth and success on an on a business level for many years. Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, Napoleon Hill, Harvey Firestone, Andrew, Andrew Carnegie were all members of similar mastermind groups. I never did in a day's work in my life. It was all fun. Thomas Edison. So how do we deal with negative people in our lives? First of all, remember that you are not responsible for their level of growth or consciousness. You can only be an example to let them keep the energy vibration as high as possible. You cannot teach them anything that they're not already willing to learn. But keep in mind, however, that nobody's completely negative. You can focus on some good qualities that do exist in them and appreciate the qualities that they have that are working within the context of your relationship. You can also acknowledge some things about them that you do like and admire. And this may encourage them to express more of the positive qualities. Don't judge the negative people in your life. Simply limit your time and interactions with them as much as possible to avoid them completely if you can. And try to be an example of more positive attitudes. Obviously, these people are family members or co-workers. It's difficult to avoid them altogether. Just do your best to avoid any issues or conflict. Keep the attitude positive and don't engage yourself emotionally in conflict when it does arise. Ultimately, you'll need to decide whether or not you want to keep these relationships in life at all. Your attitude is crucial. It affects your emotions. Your emotions, in turn, affect the energy field around you and simultaneously place your order with the universe for more of the same. So your attitude will give you exactly what your attitude is. Take a close, honest look at your attitude in various areas of your life. Is there room for improvement? The art of being happy lies in the power of extracting happiness from common things. Henry Ward Beecher Try changing your attitude and finding pleasure in the simple things of life. We all have daily tasks and mundane chores as typically dreaded in the past. Why not challenge yourself to turn even those into opportunities for growth? Change your approach into taking out the garbage, paying the bills, necessary routines that are not going to go away, so you might as well try to enjoy them. Put some music on, clean the kitchen, empty the trash, learn to bless each bill you pay. Send it off with love, be grateful, how fortunate you are to even have these luxuries in your life. You can completely shift your energy, have a little fun, look at these things as opportunities that you care for in yourself, and making contributions to the people you love, rather than burdensome chores. When you can learn to approach every single task and situation with an attitude of joy and enthusiasm, you will notice an immediate difference in your life. Life is literally what you make of it. Remember this life is a journey, and it's meant to be enjoyed. Choose to maintain a positive attitude. Be happy. Be grateful. Be loving and generous. Surround yourself with positive people and energy. Look forward to each new day with an excitement and wonder of a small child who knows what amazing things will happen next. Have faith. Have fun. Your future will unfold in miraculous ways. Most people are searching for happiness and they're looking for it. They're trying to find it in someone or something outside of themselves. 
And that's a fundamental mistake. Happiness is something that you are, and it comes from the way you think. Wayne Dyer. Gratitude and appreciation. The best attitude that you can possibly aspire to is the one of gratitude and appreciation. Gratitude and appreciation. This is the best of all attitudes you could possibly learn. Being truly grateful for what is already present in your life will automatically and effortlessly attract good, more good into your life. Make a conscious decision to appreciate and acknowledge all that you have already been given and blessed with. These emotions are the highest vibrational frequency, period. The law of attraction can and will attract even more to be thankful for. Try to be grateful for every difficult and challenging situation that arises in your life. It's often through these situations that we experience the most profound spiritual emotional growth that you could learn. To each view apparent an obstacle in view has an opportunity to develop a new quality, strength, skill, insight, or wisdom. And just be grateful for the lessons. Each and every challenge is another opportunity for growth and expansion. Rise to these occasions and appreciate all that you are learning in this process. Keep the attitude positive and appreciate through these times that not only you have to avoid attracting more of these difficult situations in your life, it will also help you create a field of positive energy that will attract more of what you do want. Happiness is itself a kind of gratitude. Joseph Wood Crutch Of all the attitudes that we can acquire, surely the attitude of gratitude is the most important and by far the most life-changing. The attitude of gratitude. Zig Ziglar A token of gratitude is Try carrying a small token, stone, crystal, some other meaningful object each day of your pocket. Throughout the day, each time, reach into your pocket, money or keys serve as a tangible reminder to stop and think about something that you have to be grateful for. This is a great way to increase your awareness of all that you already have and be appreciative of it. Take a moment to breathe and really feel the emotion and gratitude. The simple mindfulness techniques help you raise your vibrational frequencies. It keeps you in a state of constant gratitude. Gratitude, joy is an attitude. Joy is an attitude. It is a presence of love for yourself and others. It comes from feeling an inner peace, the ability to give and receive, an appreciation of self and others. It is a state of gratitude and compassion, a feeling of connection to your higher self. Your gratitude journal. Start keeping a daily gratitude journal, acknowledgement journal. This is a necessary and valuable tool for developing your own growth and awareness. Each day, entry, it's not to be intended to be looked at drawn as a diary sort of thing, but just a short, simple list of five things that you are grateful for that particular day. This is a place to honor and appreciate good in your life in the daily basis. Gratitude. Each morning before you go to bed, take a minute to review your day. Think about the day's events. Become aware of how many good things actually happened on that day. And remember to appreciate even the challenges that's encountered. Select the five things, people, events that you are most grateful for. There's no right or wrong way to whatever or whoever is sincerely grateful for in any particular day. It may be the warm sun on your face, a cool breeze, a kind word, a friend, just feeling the way you've handled any particular situation that would have thrown you into a tailspin in the past. Anything you are grateful for, as you write them in your journal, feel the gratitude and appreciation. Give thanks. Acknowledgement. Take a moment to acknowledge the changes that are occurring to you personally. Write them down. Acknowledge them for a well law of attraction working in your life. Writing down a specific event where the law of attraction was at work. The parking space and vision, the meeting that you wanted to schedule, the bonus check you received, the grade you wanted, the person said yes when you asked them about it, miracles that can do and occur on a daily basis. They are happening all around you. Honor them. Notice them. Through acknowledgement, you become more and more aware of amazing synchronicity that is already at work in your life. Make the time you spend in contemplation and writing your gratitude and acknowledgement journal a sacred part of your daily routine. Your continued expressions of joy and gratitude will draw even more greater joy, love, and abundance into your life. You'll begin to notice and change your perception of each day's events. You'll become more and more aware of positive things all around you and every single day. Your focus will shift. Your energy will shift. You'll begin to appreciate how blessed you really are. The law of attraction will respond to a higher vibration to you and how you're creating it. And the law of attraction will respond to the higher vibration you are creating. Enjoy the journey because life is just a journey. Live each day in joy and gratitude. Acknowledge the presence of God in your life. There is a calmness to a life. Live in gratitude, a quiet joy. Ralph H. Bloom. In your desire to make this easier, we have created a beautiful gratitude journal for you. Chapter 13, Prayer and Meditation. Prayer and meditations are our connections to God, to our higher power. 
Take time each day to step away from the clutter and the noise. A daily commitment to spend this in this still, quiet place is a commitment to clarity and inner peace. We need this time and space in our lives in order to remember who we really are, what's important, where our personal truth lies. It is our time to calm the spirit, soothe the soul. It restores balance in our lives and it reconnects us to our source. It is through prayer, meditation, contemplation that we are best able to hear our own inner voice. This is the time to pause, connect not only with God but with ourselves and our creative subconscious mind. This time spent within nourishes us on the deepest levels physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Some people say that through prayer we are talking to God. Through meditation we are listening to Him. Through quiet contemplation we can look inside and reconnect with our own deeper truths and wisdom. Through each of these practices we are opening our hearts and our minds and preparing ourselves to receive divine guidance and inspiration. The value of consistent prayer is not that He will hear us, but that we will hear Him. The value and consistent of consistent prayer is that he will not hear us, but that we will hear him. William McGill If you have never meditated before, here's a simple structure that you can use to begin. Find a quiet and comfortable place and set aside at least 10 to 15 minutes of undisturbed time. Sit comfortably with your back straight, but not stiff. Take a deep breath, relax, and do your best to put aside all thoughts of the past and the future, keeping your focus right here in the present moment. Become aware of breathing by focusing your attention and sensation on air that is moving in and out of your body as you breathe. Feel your stomach gently rising and falling as you breathe in and breathe out. Feel the coolness and the warmth of the air that enters and leaves your nostrils as you inhale and exhale. Notice the way each breath changes and is different. Observe your thoughts as they come and go. Your thoughts come on your mind, but don't ignore them or suppress them. Simply notice them and let them drift on by, always returning your focus back to your breathing. If you find yourself getting carried away by your thoughts, just observe where your mind went. And without judging, simply return to your breathing once again. Let your breath serve as an anchor for your thoughts. As your time comes to close, sit quietly and slowly return your thoughts and consciousness to your surroundings. Get up gradually and stretch for a moment or two. You are now ready to get back to the normal routine, relaxed and refreshed. If we know the divine art of concentration, if we know the divine art of meditation, and if we know the divine art of contemplation, easily and consciously we can unite the inner world and the outer world. Sri Shinmoy. There are many ways to meditate, but in general they consist of being still and quiet for a period of time, focusing your intention on focusing your attention on either breath or mantra of some sort. If you are new to practice of meditation, your thoughts will drift and your mind will wander at first, but remember not to be hard on yourself when this happens. This is just a part of learning how to meditate, and I love the metaphor that it's like standing on the side of a river, watching boats drift by, and every once in a while you'll discover that you've gotten into, you've gotten into one of the boats and are floating down the river. Just simply get out of the boat, climb back onto the river bank, and start observing the boats, your thoughts. Again, don't worry about whether or not you are getting right. Your ability to stay focused will increase with time and practice. Don't worry about you, whether or not you're getting it right when it comes to concentration and meditation. The regular practice of meditation will help you clear your mind of distractions, cleanse your thoughts, and enhance your spiritual connection. It renews the spirit, relaxes the body, and calms the soul. Meditation is a tool for reflection and inquiring within, and it's one of the best ways to still your thoughts, to still your thoughts in order to receive divine guidance. Through the practice of meditation, you'll begin to become even more aware of your own subtle intuitive impulses, insights, ideas, emotions, and inspirations. Meditation is the dissolution of thoughts in et eternal awareness or pure consciousness without objectification, knowing without thinking, merging finitude in infinite, in infinity. Meditation is dissolution of thoughts in eternal awareness of pure consciousness without objectification, knowing without thinking, merging finitude in infinity, in infinity. Voltaire. Spend time each day in quiet contemplation, and in quiet contemplation with quiet contemplation of prayer and meditation. Spend time each day, and here's a simple invocation that you can use to begin. An invocation in seeking to transform our lives. We ask for guidance and clarity. We ask that we find our purpose and our mission in life. We ask for divine inspiration. We ask to be of service. 
and we ask to help in releasing any old negative or limited thought patterns. We ask that our thoughts and actions unfold for greater good of all people, and we ask that miracles unfold not only in our own lives, but in the lives of others. We are thankful. We ask for peace. We ask for harmony. We ask to make a difference in the world. There's an inner alchemy that takes place throughout prayer and meditation. They help you empty your mind of worries and negative thoughts and make you and make them have room to be filled with joy and bliss and love. These are transformational processes that can change you on a cellular level. They are literally changing your brain and patterns, increasing good feelings and creating senses of happiness. In addition, in that, the vibrational frequencies of these positive emotions in a perfect harmony with what you want to attract into your life. The frequencies through prayer, contemplation, and meditation, you're aligning yourself with a higher power of opening yourself up to an unlimited potential of infinite wisdom of the universe. Your devotion and commitment to spiritual growth and expansion will serve to alter your consciousness and open you up to a greater awareness of miracles, circumstances, possibilities, synchronicity already is in work in your life. Through prayer, you are acknowledging God. You are acknowledging that there is a higher power at work in your life. By acknowledging prayer, you're acknowledging God and that there is a higher power in work in your life. Prayer, contemplation, and meditation are essential, powerful tools in your life. Again, you need to prayer. You need to pray. To have prayer five, ten times a day, have a prayer. Contemplation, where you contemplate anything about your life or where you want to go and be and meditation these are essential powerful tools in your life so make a commitment to use them they are they are the way in if you believe you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer Matthew 21 22 if you believe you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer you if you believe chapter 14 Action. Take action. Start by opening your mind and heart. Commit yourself to daily use of tools that we provided with you in the strive to become more aware of an amazing synchronicity that's already existing in your life. Sweep away all lingering negative thoughts and emotions. Sweep away all doubt. Take action each day, every day that will move you towards your purpose and your fulfillment of your dreams. Take action. There are no two kinds. There are two kinds of action that you can take. The obvious action, the obvious action is we are all familiar with obvious action. Some examples of obvi obvious action are if you want a new car, going out and test driving all the cars you are interested in, choosing the exact model you want, saving 10% of your income for a car amount. And if you want to become a doctor, then obviously take actions, things applying to medical school, taking courses in pre-med and so on. Obviously, actions are logical. Actions are logical and somewhat predictable actions, steps that stem from a conscious mind. Obvious actions are logical, somewhat predictable actions, steps, action steps that stem from your conscious mind. The second action is inspired action. Inspired action is much linear and it's oftentimes will seem to be completely unrelated to your ultimate goals. Once you begin to get in touch with your higher consciousness by using your vision book, affirmations, visualizations, daily gratitude journal, meditations and prayer. The universe will start responding by sending you the ideas, people, opportunities, money, and other resources you need to fulfill your desires and make your dreams a reality. You are going to find that you have inspired ideas, intuitive impulses, general proddings from your dreams. You must act on them. Let your curiosity and interest guide you. This is inspired action. It's when your curiosity guides you. It's the action born of your willingness to trust your inner voice. Inspired action is a real demonstration of your belief and positive expectations. This type of action is funneled through the subconscious mind and is inspired by your awareness and openness to the possibilities all around you. It speaks of your trust and your connection. It takes faith to move forward and with inspired action because it is far less familiar to us than obvious action. Inspired action is more, is far more unfamiliar to us than obvious action. Dreams pass into a reality of action. Dreams pass into the reality of action and from the action stems the dream again and this is interdependent produces. And this interdependence produces the highest form of living to dream and have reality actions and the actions will stem the dream again. Often your intuitive nudges 
will be very subtle and they may seem to have no direct relationship to the fulfillment of your dreams but if you follow them your life will become very magical based on your desires you will soon that will soon be led down the wonderful path of transformation growth and fulfillment this path may look quite different from the one that you originally imagined but learn to trust your deeper self learn to trust the process learn to trust God in the universe you are co-creating with a higher power that knows more and sees more than you can ever so be prepared to not only take the obvious logical steps which lead you to the direction of your dreams and aspirations but take the less obvious ones as well have faith be willing to move forward and have confidence and conviction of your desires knowing that the universe will support you in your efforts take any action and simply logical extensions of your belief and your trust if you didn't really believe something was possible you wouldn't take any action at all you have to believe that it's possible the basic difference between here and the obvious action is pretty much just up to you and you alone Whereas inspired action, using the power of your subconscious mind, believing in the co-creating with God and the universe, a combination of these two is ideal. Give it to God and be willing to do the work. Thought is the blossom. Language is the bud. But action, the fruit behind it. Rolf Waldo Emerson Remember through the law of attraction, the universe will provide you with all you need in order to reach your goals. You will attract the necessary resources, ideas, people into your life. It's up to you. To recognize though and it's up to you to follow through on these inspired thoughts and ideas everything you want is out there waiting for your asking everything you want also wants you but you have to take action to get it the universe wants you to succeed expect your every need to be met expect your answer to every problem expect abundance on every level Eileen Caddy Start making room in your life for beauty and abundance that is rightfully yours. Remember how powerful you are. It is not enough to dream a desire. You must actually be willing to take action both internally and externally towards creating the life of your dreams. You must also be disciplined enough to follow through with the daily rituals that will keep you in the state of positive vibrations. That is the match for the future you desire. You must also discipline enough to follow through with daily rituals that will keep you in the state of positive vibrations that will match for the future you desire so much commitment to take these actions each day make a commitment integrate these rituals into your daily routine here's some daily rituals number one begin each day by spending at least five minutes focusing on your mind your desires goals intentions get comfortable close your eyes and visualize all the goals you desire as already being fulfilled already being fulfilled really really feel the emotion that it's a reality see your day going exactly as you would like it to number two use your tools each day your vision book your vision book your gratitude journal your gratitude journal your gratitude token and affirmations will also provide tangible external inspiration and positively shift your energetic field make a commitment to really use these tools daily and apply them in your life number three Start paying attention to how often you have emotional responses each day that are not in alignment with your purpose of creating the life you desire. Don't ignore nor take for granted the emotional responses that are not aligned with your purpose of creating the life you desire. Whenever you become aware of this, make shift. Make a shift. Make the shift quick and change your thoughts and feelings to that of a vibrational match for what you want to attract. Always change your vibrational match, your vibrational match to what it is that you want to attract. Stay focused on the things that bring you joy and keep you, your expectations positive. Number four, remember the importance of gratitude, appreciation in all the areas of your life. Make time each day to connect with God and with yourself. Five, take action every day for the alignment with your purpose, goals, and desires. Be mindful and aware. Act upon your inspired ideas and trust your emotions and intuition. Pay attention and respond to the feedback that you're getting. Make daily steps in the direction of your dreams. Acknowledge the law of attraction is working in your life. With every evidence of its effect, acknowledge and give thanks. The more you acknowledge that it's working, the more it'll work. It's that simple. Acknowledge the law of attraction that is working in your life. See where your own energy wants to go, not where you think it should go. Do something because it feels right, not because it makes sense. Follow the spiritual impulse. Go where your energy wants to go and do something just because it feels right. Mary Hayes Greco. 
Hold tight to the purpose and vision that you've created for your own future and own them with every ounce of your being. Keep all of your actions in alignment with your higher purpose. Believe in yourself. Keep your intentions pure and you'll attract an amazing, beautiful thing into your life. So, be fearless to have fun. Be willing to take a few risks. Reach for the stars and know that you are supported in every way. Move forward with confidence and direction of your dreams and desires. Believe that you are not only that they are not only possible, but they are already in progress. Move forward with confidence in the direction of your dreams and desires and believe that they are not only possible, but they are already in progress. All your dreams and desires are already in progress. If you have the courage to begin, you have the courage to succeed. David Viscott. Chapter 15. Believe. Believe. The tools we provided will prepare the soil, but you must plant the seeds and create an environment that will nourish and growth and the expansion. Now that you've placed your order with the universe, you must have faith. Be resilient. Trust that it's already so and give it to God. Although you already know the exact path to your dreams, the will it reveals itself. And by willing to take action, once you commit to your dreams, the law of attraction will take care of the rest and life will present you with people, circumstances, and whatever else is needed to bring them into reality. You must be the change that you want to see in the world. Mahatma Gandhi We hope that you will make a personal commitment to creating a better life for yourself and a better world around all of us. Imagine the possibilities. Envision just how amazing the world could become if all of us just made the shift into awareness, into a positive state of being. Can you imagine how the world would be if everyone made the shift? into awareness of a positive state of being. We could shift the energy of the entire planet, one person at a time, through our awareness, generosity, commitment, intention. We could truly begin to live in accordance with the natural laws of the universe and restore our balance with nature. We can create a world filled with love, joy, harmony, and peace. Give up your small ambitions and come and save the world. St. Francis Xavier Cabrini We have been living far too long in a state of oblivion completely unaware of just how powerful we really are. Now is the time to reclaim your power. Now is the time to be fully accountable for the state of our lives and the state of the world that we live in. Now is the time to reclaim the joy and abundance that is rightfully ours. The law of attraction is motion, and you have already begun. The future is yours. See it. Feel it. Believe it. Just take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. Martin Luther King, Jr. Just take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. To fully live the law of attraction and create the life of your dreams. To fully live the law of attraction and create the life of your dreams, you have to use your affirmations daily. Use your gratitude journal daily. Use your vision book daily. Spend your time each day in prayer of meditation. Stay true to your purpose. Believe in your dreams. Focus on the positive. Live in a state of constant gratitude. Visualize the life that you desire. Be passionate about life. Be generous. Be happy. Do the things that make you feel good. Find the best in every situation. Listen to your inner voice. Respond to internal and external feedback. Follow through on your inspired thoughts. Be aware of miracles all around you. Be willing to take risks. Move forward with confidence. Acknowledge the change you see and feel. Remember the law of attraction. Trust. Release it to God. Source. The universe. This is the key to unlocking the law of attraction. And this is the key to your future. If you have questions or comments, please contact the author, Jack Canfield. Everything you want is out there waiting for you to ask. Everything you want wants you. But you have to take action to get it. The universe wants you to succeed. Keys to the key to living the law of attraction. A simple guide to creating the life of your dreams. Jack Canfield. Thank you for watching this video, my friends. I hope you really enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a comment below and please subscribe to this channel. I want to give you so much more. Thank you and I'll see you next time.